Good afternoon and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at HQ is Greg Skibitsky. He's the CEO of the Thassos Group, and we're here to discuss artificial intelligence and data. Greg, I think that's everyone's hot topic right now. And it's super interesting with Thassos because you started six years ago, but just only six months ago, you put out a website and really started getting the brand out there. Why is that? Sure. Uh, It turns out it takes a lot of time to analyze data uh, and prepare for financial services uh, industry. So we work uh, only with the buy side. We started six years ago at uh, MIT, uh, and the whole point of of what Dassos does uh, is analyze very large amounts of uh, location data from mobile devices. We see probably uh, right now close to uh, half a billion devices, uh, and I don't mean uh, you know every once a month, uh, nor once a week, or nor in the day. We see the location of uh, half a billion devices um, getting close to that uh, inside every uh, half an hour or every few minutes, right around the world. So this kind of information, um, you know, is a true sort of big data um, uh, processing uh, quandary. And so I thought it would take about three years to to get it right. Turns out it takes about um, six years. So we spent the first three years, um, you know, processing the the data. And then, um, you know, since you never really know what the buy side needs and, and, you know, it's very hard to define products without being on the inside, uh, we spent uh, a full year actually inside a $10 billion plus hedge fund here in, in New York with our key folks sitting inside, really listening to the PMs, uh, you know, what do they need? How do they use the data? Um, what data do they have already or have good proxies for? And what information, you know, should we try to extract out of the location data? Um, only after that, and we were actually running a $100 million uh, fund ourselves to test those, those signals, only after that was all proven, um, then we started to go from more of a consulting basis to uh, building real uh, products, right? And the products, uh, you know, we spent uh, two years actually just with beta customers, uh, you know, working without a website to make sure that the customers were taking our standard uh, data feeds, downloading them from AWS, um, you know, taking this two and a half years of historical data and, you know, the updates that we publish every week, um, you know, downloading it um, and, you know, across all these different subsectors of, of data that we generate, um, getting value out of it, right? So the 1. Ver- 1.0 version of the stream um, had a lot of problems, right? The 1.1, the 1.2, the, then you go to the 2.0, uh, the 2.1, and so over this period of, of a couple of years, um, you know, we worked with the funds that were our beta customers, and we made sure um, that in the end they were delighted, <laughs> right? Right, right? And only then, at that point, you know, did we feel comfortable that once we see the, you know, their their level of interest and in, you know, in growing the relationship with us, um, only then, uh, you know, did we put that information out publicly and put up a website, uh, because you know, with data in the financial services market, you you really only get one shot to, right. to get it, it right. Right, and it's still a relatively new industry. Just look at the way that we've done research only. 10 years ago, and this is what I want to ask you here because you were a feature presenter at Quandle and Battlefin conferences. Our NASDAQ Analytics Hub has a big presence at those conferences as well, but even in just 12 months, with what you've learned at the conferences, how much has this industry changed? Well, um, for example, the Quandle conference, right? So this is the second year of the conference. Uh, the first year had uh, 139 attendees. Okay, it's very sparse. Uh, and this year, they sold out the room at 400, uh, and there was a big waiting list, right? So uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, you know, some of the big funds you might think of, like big, big quant funds, they had like, you know, 15 people, uh, you know, from each fund at the conference. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, over the list, uh, last year, it's been a, a major uh, transition. I think that, you know, it just takes, first of all, it takes a long time to do anything in the finance sector, right? Because you're evaluating risk, you're looking at compliance. <laughs> you know, so everything takes much longer than, than anywhere else. Um, and then you've got on the other side, you're doing data Data analytics, right? And just like I said, I thought this was going to take us three years, and it took us six years. Everything takes so long to do data analytics. So you've got slow finance, time slow data analytics. Um, it just takes a long time for this stuff to right. come together. Um, you know, funds were trying to get on the bandwagon. They needed to tell their LPs, uh, you know, that we're doing data science, right? But they were really just trying to figure it out. Um, so now I think it's all come together, uh, which is great. But don't forget that for a long time, uh, you know, people have been working on, you know, this kind of data stuff. You think the the pioneers of Stat Arb. Uh, right, 20 years ago, they spent their time, and one of our advisors is a guy named Ken Nickerson, who's mm-hmm. a, the technical head of, of uh, PDT back then, and they, you know, he tells me they spent all their time for years just cleaning data, right? And maybe people were laughing at them, why are you doing that, right? But look at the results that these stat art shops, you know, got. Uh, and we're, it's nothing new. We're just in the same phase and you have to invest in cleaning the data, this new data, uh, just like they did um, back then. So I would say that there's a, a, a surge in interest, but it's really nothing new. Well, it's interesting because you talked about all this data that's available out there when you think of it, you know, tracking foot traffic yep. with retailers, but there's so much more that 
Vassos measures. Can you talk about the different areas that you also look at as well? Sure. So the first thing um, you know that we did when we when we um, you know, started working with the you know the funds uh, was of course working on um, providing a secondary signal to uh, the data that they already get from uh, credit card transaction data, right? So if you're a fund and you're trading the quarter, I mean it's it's table stakes these days to have credit card transaction data. Um, the problem is that no matter who you buy your credit card transaction data from, you're basically getting it from the same major underlying source, right? There isn't like two major sources um, that can independently validate each other, right? So obviously, um, when, when these big funds get their credit card data and they see a, you know, it looks like somebody's having a strong quarter or a very strong quarter and it's unexpected, the first thing you think is, is it a data error, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you validate that or invalidate it for, for your risk models? So people were looking at, um, back then, using the location data, and everyone who uses our location data for, for trading retailers, you know, puts it on top of the, uh, the layer of the, the, the transaction data from credit cards, and then we have two signals, and you see one is strong, and then the other one, independently measured, says it's also strong, uh, you get a lot more comfortable, uh, right? And so th this is new. Um, but then, you know, beyond that, uh, we started looking at uh, and productizing the traffic to uh, shopping malls, shopping mall REITs, right? So um, that's actually our most popular product uh, right now. It's called um, Mall Streams, and it's basically looking at um, you know every single uh, shopping mall in the U.S. Uh, it's looking at the traffic uh, index on a daily basis with about two and a half years history, um, nicely normalized, so you can do year over year and, and quarter over quarter things like that. Um, and it's looking at to by ticker, uh, and everything bas basically everything we do is is linked to the ticker. So you're looking at malls by ticker. You can look at the mall traffic, um, you know, to the individual property level and then you can go one level deeper and look at the individual property you can look at all the census block groups that everybody's coming from to go to those mm -hmm. malls and how it's changing over time so you get um, you know really low dimension data at the top people can look at the data in a PDF or if you're sophisticated you can go really low and you know build these high dimensional models and it's the same data package that you you subscribe to and you get on a uh, weekly basis and so um, those are the popular things uh, and then we also have uh, an industrial streams mm -hmm. product which is looking at uh, the hour worked and the productivity in every single factory um, you know in in the US so you know just like um, it's table stakes right now to have credit card transaction data uh, it's becoming table stakes that if you're in the mall REIT industry how could you not know now what the foot traffic is in real time to these mall properties that are owned by companies with, with 50 billion dollar market caps right? right it's table stakes and we think that in the future um, things like industrial streams you know if you're looking at RV manufacturers or you're looking at things like Harley Davidson where it's very people oriented the manufacturer manufacturing facilities, um, it'll be crazy to think uh, in the future that you know, you're know you an analyst and you didn't know if the hours worked is going up or down in these uh, factories. So That's my next question to you. Do fund managers think this work, is this, is, is this working in the industry and do you have to be a data scientist to use this kind of information? Um, you know, less and less so, right? So, um, you know, we make sure that, the, that every product that we have, like, for example, the mall streams, um, you know, you get uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, you can get a PDF, right, which shows sort of like, you know, the year over year, you know, change. You don't have to be a data scientist at all. Or uh, you can look at it on the ticker level. So you have like one number for every day, which is like an index. Um, and it's really simple. One date, one number per day. You can put in Excel, hit magic plot, and, you know, you, you, you see it come out. So that's not that hard. Um, but then you have the lower level data that's that's to the individual properties and the census data and everything. So if you want to do a really highly dimensional uh, analysis and you know extract alpha that's you know better than your your peers, you have all the raw data underneath it to recreate all that stuff or combine it with other data. You know, doing doing the mosaic uh, and make it um, you know even better. All right, and to wrap up. Data exists globally. Yes. So what's Thessos working on going forward? And what's your outlook for the industry in general? Because I feel like we have the ability to collect all of this data. Now what? Because there's just so much out there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent question. So I think that you know, the U.S. has been uh, a great test case because there are a lot of ground truth KPIs, right? So anytime you have data like this, What's a KPI? Um, it's like a, the key performance indicator, right? So we don't take our location data and uh, measure it against price and do back testing, right? You look at the ground truth KPI that the location data is supposed to measure. So you measure it against you know, foot traffic to uh, a retailer, you know, because it's not supposed to measure price. It's supposed to measure foot traffic, right? So in the U.S., it's great because these ground truth KPIs exist and you can measure the exact accuracy of your data data against ground truth. Mm -hmm. So, But once it's working, you can take these systems and put them into places um, like the rest of the world, for example. Um, you know, Maybe the market is less liquid, but there's much more uh, advantage, possibly, if you have an information uh, advantage to trade. So you know, we have um, products coming out uh, that are across Europe, mall REITs and retailers. Uh, we have China data. Uh, and we're building products uh, on China. Um, and I think it's really interesting when you start looking at manufacturing, you start looking at commodities processing, uh, things like
like that on a global basis, we can have uh, real-time data. So I think that um, at least the location data field, uh, you know, there's so many more subsectors to of the uh, gig subsectors to address, and uh, there's so many different regions of the the world um, that slowly, you know, we end up geofencing the the, the whole planet. So um, it's a lot of work uh, ahead of us. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us at Nasdaq, and thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at Nasdaq. <laughs>